Calabasas High School is showing off its smarts by the way of the academic decathlon team. The team, led by teacher and coach Tyler Lee, just took home its third straight win in the Ventura County Academic Decathlon and now is preparing for its next statewide competition in Sacramento in the spring. Hi, I'm Laura Nickerson and welcome to our CTV special on the Calabasas High School Academic Decathlon team. So what exactly is the Academic Decathlon? Uh, academic Decathlon is an academic competition for high schools where we have a team of students and with different grade levels, different GPAs, and there's a theme for every year and they kind of study it and they get tested on 10 different subjects, seven objective subjects ranging from science and art and history to three subjective subjects. Uh, they write an essay on the topic, they give an interview, and they give a speech. Going to uh, Ventura this year, what kind of preparation did the kids have to do? So our team, once we pick the team in the spring for the following year, we start right about the time school starts. You know, the team meets and we are an after school extracurricular. We don't have a class or anything. Some schools have it, but ours is just um, on their free time they meet. We meet after school a couple hours every day. And then as the competition gets closer, we increase our hours. So you have students who are willing to give up their free time to come in here every day and on the weekends and study. I feel lucky every year with the students that I get. So that's probably the hardest and I get advice from other teachers um, when I'm forming the team. So I have tryouts and I interview the kids, I have them give a speech. But then one thing I do is I go and ask teachers mm. at the school, tell me about this student, you know. How are they in class? How are they with other people? because that's where I can get a, you know, a true sense of who they are. And then for me, it's put that all together like a puzzle because we're gonna spend hundreds and hundreds of hours together. <laughs> so I have to be able to really predict and guess that it's gonna work with this group of people. And for the past three years, we've been pretty lucky. You came in here as a new teacher and started this program. What was that process like? So my first year, I student taught at Calabasas High School and then I got hired as an AP US history teacher. And in that first year, pretty much at the beginning, I realized I wanted to create something at the school. I wanted to contribute outside of just my classroom. So I went to the principal, CJ Foss, and I said, I want to start an academic decathlon team. And locally, academic decathlon is pretty popular because there are, have been some successful schools, El Camino, Granada. And I myself, I went to El Camino, so I know what it was like. And I, I said, this could be the thing that I build here, and I want to make an academic decathlon. And Mrs. Foss said, yes, of course. Like, whatever you want, whatever you need, go for it. So in that first year of teaching, it was me just getting used to being a teacher. <laughs> and then that spring, once I got to know some students, I decided, okay, let's go for it. Let's, let's experiment on this. And we haven't looked back. Was it a hard sell? I mean, did you have kids lining up, asking <laughs> you to be a part of it? Or did you have to go knock on a couple doors? No kids lining up. <laughs> um, it was pretty much all of my students. So I teach juniors. And I was thinking, okay, they're going to be seniors next year. Mm -hmm. I've developed this relationship with them, and I kind of had to beg them in the spring. I said, let's try this. Let's go for it. And before we even started on day one, kids quit. <laughs> you know, so in our first year, in that first season, we had students. The goal was to start in August, and we didn't have a full team until late October, which is months into schools already studying. And it was a risk. And I said to them, entering the competition, I said, if we get second to last place, that's an achievement for us because every other school in this competition has been here before. We've never been here. So if we beat one team, then that's good and we could build from that. And at the award ceremony, we won. So when the team goes to a competition like that, what are they committing to? How long is it <clears throat> and what is the process? So it's not like most sports. Um, it's not, you know, you have games against other schools and then you have playoffs and all that. The unfortunate thing for Akadek is the county competition is once. So one time, two weekends and you're done. Um, the first weekend, they write their essay, they give their speech, their prepared speech, and an impromptu speech on a topic they don't know about, and they get interviewed. And then the second weekend, they come back to take tests. <laughs> and that's the, the part that isn't as fun. 
So they take in the seven subjects, they take 50 question tests. So 50 questions on art, 50 questions on music, 50 on history, 50 literature, 50 questions on everything. And they sit in a room. And it's not like in the movies, you know, or Jeopardy, where they <laughs> buzz in. Um, it's just sit there and show how much you've learned and how far you've come, which I, it's the least exciting part, but I think it's the best part because in sports or in Jeopardy, it's who can click the fastest. Yeah. Or it's, you, you know, there's variables that you don't know with another team and their success. But with this, it's, you just get to prove how much you know. You're not really competing against anyone else in that sense. And then there is an exciting part, the super quiz. So at the end of it all, there's a live portion in the gym of a high school and the kids sit there together and it's time. There's a question on the board and they have you know, 10 seconds to answer it. And then they raise their hand if they got right. And that's where the family and friends and everyone can kind of see it happen. It's a lot more action packed. A lot more action, yeah. So you won that too this year. We won that too, yeah. Uh, the team themselves, can you talk a little bit about that? So to compete, you need a minimum of six students and a maximum of nine. And that consists of three different GPA levels. So you have what they call the honors level, and that's an overall GPA above a 3.75. So those are your A students that we usually call. Then you have the scholastic team, which is a GPA of 3.0 to 3.75. So those are the, your B students. And then you have to have students in the varsity level, which is under 3.0 GPA. So those are your average C students. And you cannot compete as a team without all of those. So you have two to three at each of those levels, and that makes, it, makes up a team of six to nine. And this year, for the first year, we had two full teams. Oh. So we were, we were able to compete as the Calabasas A team with each of those levels, and then the Calabasas B team with each of those levels. And actually, we won both the A team division and the B team division. <laughs> so we got two first places this year. That inspires more kids to sign up, knowing that there's actually a place for all levels in this program. So when I advertise for the next year, we usually do it in March. Once I find out the topic for next year, which is usually the first of March, then I hold a meeting in this classroom for anyone interested. And the room is usually packed, but it's packed full of the kids that are that top GPA because those are the ones that are naturally more motivated and they hear academic competition, I want to prove myself. Yeah. It's the scholastic, that B GPA, and then the varsity that I really have to go looking for. And that's, you know, I look in amongst my own students, I go ask other uh, teachers, do you know of any students who are under 3.0 that you think would be good for this program? And that's always the hardest to find, but that's always the most worthwhile because I can find three A, G, A students, 4.0 GPA students who will do this. Right. Every, every school can find them. It's finding the under 3.0 students who are willing to stay here after school every single day who are not always the most um, motivated in academic sense to get them to do this team. And that's where we've been most successful. And what do you tell them? <sighs> uh, I think one of the things I really advertise when I'm talking about the program isn't the trophies, even though they're nice, what you'll get out of it as a family. Every single year, new kids. Um, this year is the first year we've ever had a returner come back. Usually it's just seniors. And it's that family dynamic. It's, you could be part of a team. Our team is together more than any sports team. Sports teams are two to three months. We are from August until March, you know, every single day. We see each other more than we see our own families. It seems hard at times, but it's also great because these are lifelong friends. Our first year, that team still travels together. They go on road trips together and they're in college now. They're <laughs> sophomores in college and they are already planning on taking a road trip to Sacramento for the state competition. So it's those relationships are really, I think, why most students want to do it. How does that make you feel? when you see these wins, when you see these students going through the program? I like the growth of it. Not of the program, but of the students. And the hardest part is at the beginning of being a team, we take these tests and they're hard and they don't do well. And these are students who usually do well on tests. And it's the first time they've ever done this poorly on a test, they think. But it really isn't that poorly. And as we learn the same material, it's a thousand pages and they just review it and they keep going over it and over and over it and they grow and they get better and their scores go up. The work you put into it pays off. It's one of the few programs where that works. How much you put into it, your scores are going to go up. Mm. Right? So it's really, you see that growth and 
you get that payoff. And I get that payoff seeing them feel that achievement, that sense of accomplishment. Well, what happens next? You have another competition coming up, right? So we have the state competition. So every county holds a competition. And depending on the size of the county, a certain number of schools are invited to the state competition. So every county winner automatically goes, and then you get a couple others. So there's four schools going to the competition from Ventura County this year. Mm -hmm. And that's in Sacramento in March. And it's the same tests, not the same questions, but you still take the same number of tests. You still give a speech. It's still on the same information. But now it's the best of the best. You know, it's the best from every county. It's the best of California. It's usually 60 to 70 schools. Wow. And it's, it's harder. It's, it's intimidating because you may have won your county, but now you're, you're up against some top schools. And in the past couple of years, we've entered, they do divisions. So the top 20 schools are Division One, the next 20 are Division Two, and then the bottom 20 are Division Three, And that's so the schools can feel achievement at an equal level, mm -hmm. right? You know, the top schools compete against each other in the middle. Uh, our first year, we entered at Division Two, and we finished about fifth in Division Two, so 25th in the state. Last year, we entered the competition 16th in the state, but it's hard when you're bottom of Division One to stay motivated because you know you're get going against the number one school in the state. Right. This year, we're entering seventh in the state, so top 10. Now we're motivated because we can see it. We're, we're right there. We're, we're within distance. We're Something crazy could happen. Who's your main competition? Uh, Granada and El Camino, every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when are you going to beat them? Maybe this year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. I tell that first-year team, um, I sent a message to them right before we went into the award ceremony this year, before we knew we won. And I texted them. I said, everything that this team ever accomplishes is because of you guys. You guys you know, took the risk. You experimented with me, and we built a program. And every year we're building and where the kids see growth in their scores, I see growth as a team because we're moving up in the overall rankings. Whereas like El Camino and Granada are number one, number two every year. We were nowhere you know, to go but down. Exactly. Yeah. We were <laughs> twenty four, then we're sixteen, now we're seven. So for me, it's confirming what I'm doing and the changes I make every year and seeing, okay, this is working, now let's keep going and and maybe we'll be up there with them. In five years, what do you want this program to look like? Uh, five years, I want to expand it. You know, I love the opportunity it brings to students of all GPA levels. I think that's really important. And every year, I'm, we're getting more publicity, whether it's with the city or just within the campus. Mm -hmm. You know, the first year at school, no one knew who we were. And then we won. So people started to hear about it. You know, so I think that, you know, getting more kids who might not have done it before, getting that access, but really just new kids every year. You know, it doesn't have to be the trophies for me, not the championship banners or anything like that, but just providing this opportunity for kids. So tell me about your personal journey in coming to this team and becoming the captain. My personal journey started uh, my second semester of my sophomore year, but before that, during my freshman year, I was part of a very aggressive group of friends. Kusha Karamati, senior. We did a lot of uh, delinquent type activities, so we, we got into a lot of fights and a lot of things like that. And later on in my f uh, first semester of my sophomore year, I got, uh, got a suspension on my record. Mm. So. Uh, after that day, I started to reflect on my behavior and I started to uh, change up my grades a little bit, started focusing more on school and stopped hanging out with those group of kids. Uh, a few weeks later, I got a letter of recommendation to join the academic decathlon team and so I did and my junior year was my first year on it. Mm -hmm. After that, the, with the help of Mr. Lee, he, um, he helped put me on the like, right guide to becoming a successful student. Mm -hmm. And uh, my senior year, he gave me the honor of being captain of the team. And that's pretty much the journey. How did that change how you feel about yourself? Um, it definitely made me feel more proud about myself. I was a lot happier. I, uh, I wasn't as aggressive anymore. Uh, and overall, I just um, I really appreciated the things that he did a lot. What was that leap like, though, for you 
to uh, not only go to school, but also come after school every day. I mean, were there some big obstacles there, or did you just sort of jump right in? Uh, no, there was, uh, there was a few obstacles. Uh, of course, the time management and giving up like that free time. I was always used to going home and just relaxing and going out with friends on the weekdays. And to give that up to do something that's more productive was definitely, uh, it was definitely a little bit hard, yeah. getting used to the studying of it but um, definitely way more rewarding than going out and doing like the stupid activities we used to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, now look at you, you're a team leader. Uh, what is your relationship with the rest of the team like? Um, again, just like any other, like any other team, like I have a pretty close relationship with every member on the team. That's great. And when they go into these competitions, like the one that you just won, how do you encourage them? Being uh, supportive of them, just uh, keeping them on, on task, uh, giving them examples of last year's team, our flaws of last year's team to become successful for this year. What do you think some of this year's team's strengths are? Um, definitely the motivation is a lot higher than last year's. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, we have like a great team this year. Our A team especially has a um, like that sense of that like drive to become like the top 10 like we are going in seventh place so they definitely have that drive on with them and what of the obstacles that are sort of laying in their path you know at times we do get a little bit distracted just like any other team does but um other than that we don't have that many obstacles in our way is it nerve-wracking to go into these competitions is there a lot of pressure there there definitely is a little bit of pressure but uh, i feel that throughout the year we we uh, study so hard that I feel that uh, there really isn't like that much of pressure because we all know that uh, we all have been studying, we all like have, know the material and we all have it down. So you get to go and just have a good time because you know you've put the work in. Yes. Like, yeah. It's fun, but uh, of course there are times where you doubt yourself, but at, at the end of the day, you, we know that we gave it our best and hardest. Now when you go into the state finals in Sacramento, what's your strategy? Same thing as going into Ventura confidence, we know the material, we have it down, just same thing. And if you could say maybe in one sentence what being a part of this program means to you personally, what would that be? It's just been an honor. That's the best way to sum it up for me personally. It's just been the, probably the best two years of my high school. What brought you to this team? Why did you decide to work so hard in your free time? I think I kind of, I saw last year's team um, being successful and then I was torn between like, could I be a part of that? And eventually I just kind of took the leap. Benny Cohen, I'm a senior. What's your best subject? Uh, my best subject goes back and forth between art and music, but I've found those just very infinitely interesting, especially the art, something that I haven't studied before, but now I absolutely love. Great. And what about you? What is your best subject? What brought you here? What's your story? Well, I just really wanted to push myself my senior year. I wanted to see what I could accomplish in my last year of high school, and I'd say my best subjects were probably science or econ. Isabel Daly, and I'm a senior. Do you think that being a part of this will help you as you go forward into college and beyond? I do. It's given me a lot of study skills that have improved my other classes just outside of DECA, but it's something I know that I'm going to be able to take with me as I move on to college. And what about you? You're a sophomore, but most of the people on the team are seniors, correct? What brought you here? Well, me trying out was kind of a long shot. I didn't actually think I would make it onto the team, but once I did, it really motivated me. Um, and I'm so glad to be here, surrounded by amazing people every day. Quinan Nguyen, and I'm a sophomore. What do you think your best subject is? I think my best subjects are science and art, just because it enables me to apply both sides of my brain. So when you walk into a competition like the one that you just aced, by the way, what is the thing going through your head? Um, I think it's a little bit of, um nerves to do your hard work justice like one of the things that like I go back to when I tell people about the competition was it, it's a funny feeling when you've been studying the same material for the last six seven months I don't know the exact number and number 17 on history like you still don't know it because <laughs> there's a lot to know and um, every test is different but going into the test you just kind of have to fall back on your laurels there's a reason that we do the processes we do and it paid off so well, does the rest of the school, um, do they get involved? Are they cheering you on? Or are they still kind of learning what this team's about? I think we're still, you know, not very well known. You know, we're building the program and people are obviously uh, like commenting on our accomplishments. But the team has really just been able to grow into something that's more foundational, something that 
the school is more involved with and I think that's going to keep growing as the years go by. What is it that motivates you day after day when you could be doing something else? I think initially it's kind of just learning new information. It's fun, you're gaining more knowledge, but as time goes on and as the team gets closer, as hard as you're working, you know everyone around you is working just as hard. And as much as you want to do it for yourself, you want to do it for the people that's on, that are on your team. And what do you think you'll take from this team into next year's team? I think, if anything, I'll know how to build like a team dynamic. And it's kind of, being younger, I was kind of um, scared about what the team dynamic would be, but these people have become mentors to me and I look forward to what the future brings. What made you join this team? I've always found that I've been pretty uh, used to, to school. I haven't had to try that hard. So senior year, I, I, was, I was really glad that I was able to um, be able to join this team and really, really uh, push myself, I guess, uh, to learn as much as I could about a time where my parents uh, were born and, and sort of grew up. Max Repass, and I'm a senior. It was based in the 60s. That was the big theme of this recent win. So how did you do research for that? We have 10 resource guides um, on the various subjects of the uh, academic decathlon, and um, they are they they contain information about the 1960s. So that is how we learned about the 1960s. Ben Ford, I'm a junior. What was the most interesting piece of information that you found about that time? My favorite is the history. I just think it's really interesting, and history to me, like it just it reads like a story, and I just I love learning about it. And obviously, none of us lived through it, so <laughs> I think it's a lot more interesting to hear about. Hannah Kaplan and I'm a senior. The Woolsey fires happened before this recent win and I know uh, there was lots of evacuations. The whole community was obviously very affected by that but you also were out of school for two weeks so how did you navigate that and then jumping back into a big competition? Um, I mean for me at least you know being out of school for for two weeks I just thought that was more um, time to study DECA uh, you know at home alone uh, and luckily I wasn't um, as affected as most people I was just outside of the sort of zone where people had to evacuate I was able to put my time to um, uh, better use than I think uh, some people. Did that affect the team's morale? Were you texting each other? Were you trying to keep up or were you all sort of on your own studying at that time? No, we were, it was nothing different than usual. We had an active group chat still, but <laughs> like we were all safe and alive, so it was okay. So tell me about your journey personally. So what is some of your strengths as a decathlete and what do you think that you are looking forward to working on as this year progresses? So I think some of my strengths, like subject-wise, have just been history and art. Those have definitely been something that I've found the most interesting. Um, but something that I've had to work on a lot is music and econ. Those have definitely been like the toughest. Something that we've all just like carried through all this is just self-motivation and pushing each other and helping each other when we have a weakness and someone else is your weakness, but it's their strength and you guys can help each other. And that's kind of how we work. It is so inspiring to see this incredible group of young people work so hard to achieve their goals. Congratulations to Coach Tyler Lee and to the entire team of the Academic Decathlon team here at Calabasas High School for bringing home fifth place at the California State Decathlon 2019. I'm Laura Nickerson. Thank you for joining me for the CTV special on the Calabasas High School Academic Decathlon team.